Tic tac, tic tac, as you saw in the intro, it is the Tiago Motta day. It was just a matter of time. I told you here on the channel a few days ago, Thursday, the 23rd of May, would have been an important and decisive day. We are Thursday, the 23rd. It is important and it will be a decisive day. I will give you all the details, the contract, the salary that uh, Tiago Motta will earn, who you will take with him from Bologna. Not only Tiago Motta, but also something that you will appreciate, that you will love, that you will like. A beautiful return in casa Juve, in the home of Juve. We'll go in all these details and much more, but before that, let me say thank you, because you are just incredible. I'm feeling that curiosity, that will of Juve 24-25. How do I know? that you are all pumped up like I am because I'm watching it in the numbers. Numbers are not everything in life, but when you are looking at the latest videos, I'm not speaking about the lives or the shorts, really the videos, the interest in Juve is incredible. I was asking where are all the Juventini of the world? Well, they are back. Look at the numbers, more than 4,000 views per video every single day. Thank you for that. Thank you to the 29,706 Juventini that subscribed. You know that we have one target. It is 30,000 Juventini before the end of May. We can do it. We start with what happened yesterday. What a day. What a day. I told you eh, that today would have been decisive. It started with Romeo Agresti on Instagram with a picture of Tiago Motta, Sand Clock, white and black bubbles bianconere with just a matter of time and then it started eh, like an avalanche like in the mountain when you see the snow that is coming on the ground with Tiago Mota announced by Nicolo Schira Tiago Mota to Juventus as a new coach from July he will earn 4 million per year plus bonuses. This happened on 11.20. Three minutes later, you have an Alfredo Pedula that is insisting on Tiago Motta since months now. Tiago Motta Juventus soon. Daniele Longo, that has always been in front of Tiago Motta Juve, he's not taking care of you, he's more Milan side, but also him knowing already what will happen at one minute later than Alfredo Pedula with Tiago Motta. Motta Juventus another time an emoji of a sand clock guys even this morning confirmation from Brazil with Andersinho Marquez with a picture of himself and Tiago Motta saying Tiago Motta será o próximo técnico do Juventus Tiago Motta will be the next coach of Juventus congratulations parabéns when all of them are going towards one direction, we know what it means. We know what it means. There is no way back anymore. And I'm extremely happy for that. We will tell you what will happen today in a second. Let me say that I'm extremely happy. Why? Because I remember, and I will take credit on that one, that I have always supported Tiago Motta as a coach, as a fantastic coach, as a fantastic person with big values, but also a coach that I believe that can do well, that could do well. He showed it at Bologna. Now, of course, it will be the next step. What can he do? at Juventus but I really want to put my face on it I really want to tell you that it will be beautiful it will be nice and I can't wait to see Tiago Motta at Juventus as soon as possible what will happen today because today is a big day well today already we know that there was a press conference before the last game of Bologna Genoa Bologna that will be played on tomorrow has been cancelled, has been cancelled. There will be no last press conference, at least in front of the journalist for Genoa. Bologna, instead there will be a meeting because at 12 p.m. there should be a final meeting. Not that much to try to convince or to try to speak or to negotiate or to... No, Tiago Motta will go convinced. He will go and he will say what I already told you because, guys, he didn't wait until today. What I already told you in a verbal way, in the informal way, well, I put it black on white. I leave at the end of the season and I go to Juventus. Will we know it today that he will go to Juventus? Big question mark. I think not. I don't believe so. I don't think that there will be an official communication of Juventus. But we will know probably officially that he will stop his journey at Bologna so that tomorrow he can receive a goodbye, even if it is away from home and not in their Dallara stadium. But I believe that today we will know officially that it's the end. Then, of course... You never know in life, and eh? 99.99999% it's Juve, then in life, you never know. But Tiago Motta to Juventus is a done deal, and I can't wait, and I'm extremely happy for that. Who will come with him from Bologna? Well, six different members of the staff, his assistant, his vice coach, this Alexandre Hugo, Frenchman, important one, especially because he's taking care of the tactical side, master of tactic. But I tell you, there is one name that I can't wait to see arriving together with Tiago Motta, and it is the name of Simon 
Collinet, another Frenchman. Who is Simon Collinet? Well, it's the guy, the magician of the athletic part, of the physical part. I can't wait. This is the name that I was waiting for. Not that much Simon Collinet, but the name of a great, fantastic physical coach. Because that's what Juventus need. The ability to run, not 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. The ability to run from the first minute until the 95th minute, not only one game, but an entire season. Running, running, running. And if you want a Thiago Motta Juventus to work, like Bologna work, intensity, super high pressing, understanding and keeping that lucidity while you are at high peak performance. So Simon Collinet, the magician of the athletic part, I can't wait to welcome you. I will say nearly as much as Thiago Motta, that's my opinion. So he will take six members of the staff, understanding what will happen with the goalkeeper trainers. Why? Because we already have a historical one there, Claudio Filippi, that has always done a fantastic work, not linked to the Max Allegri staff, but always linked to Juventus. He's there since years. So let's understand what will happen with Claudio Filippi, but that's something that we will talk about in the future when everything will be black on white. The new Juve. Well, we already told you a few names. But one real key factor of this new Juve can't be someone else than Nicolo Fagioli. Nicolo Fagioli that was in the parking box because of his own mistake. He paid the price for it. We saw a few minutes, 25 minutes of Nicolo Fagioli against Bologna. Hey, Bologna in his destiny. Nicolo Fagioli will be the first one that will be there. A new signing for Juventus. And then if you're really speaking about new faces, the first one that should join Juventus is Di Gregorio. I'm super happy for Fagioli also for another news. For what? Because Nicolo Fagioli apparently will be in the 30 men. Then Spalletti will call up for the pre training session for the test training session before going towards i believe 26 26 italians that will go with euro 24 i'm super happy for fagioli sincerely there was not a lot of hope there were not a lot of chances but i think that spalletti is doing the right choice why because the guy he has fire in him he wants to prove he knows that he threw away one year of his career and when we know that careers are going that fast away well having a man that wants to put every drop of sweat on the field even starting from the bench i think it's a really smart choice let's see if he will be confirmed in the 26 who are the other juventini that should go there cambiaso fagioli locatelli chiesa and there is a slight chance not that much but for federico gatti that could be a possible sub in case of an injury or whatever could be federico gatti but at the moment not that much chances who is Another one that Juventus should start with, at least the negotiation. Now that we know who will be the coach, now that we know what competition will play, well, we know it is this Adrien Rabiot. Adrien Rabiot, we saw in the tunnels that hug of Thiago Motta. We all remember, i telling you that story since a few weeks now, of that link, that fraternal brotherhood link between Thiago Motta and Adrien Rabiot. Let's see if uh, Juventus will be able to convince Rabiot. Let's see if Rabiot will want to continue with Juventus. Big question mark there, but that's one that we will start the negotiation with to understand. Another one that can join Juventus, I'm extremely happy about that, is Matteo Serra. You will tell me, Beppe, who is Matteo Serra? Is he a player? Is he not? He's a scout, scout of Paris Saint-Germain. You will tell me why, Beppe. Hey, we lost Matteo Tognozzi. We lost uh, Manna, two persons that were there since the beginning of the next gen that have done extremely a lot for finding these big talents, Kenan Yildiz, Mattia Sule, Baranecha, etc., etc. Well, we are missing someone there. And Matteo Serra, when we are seeing what Paris Saint-Germain did with their youth academy in recent years, Matteo Serra can be a fantastic person to continue to find the next stars. With Motta, not only Matteo Serra, not only the technical staff, not only players, but maybe also, probably also, Giorgio Chiellini. Giorgio Chiellini, the ex-captain that can come back home as a manager. Chiellini torna a casa. Chiellini comes back home. Wait, wait, wait. Chiellini has never cut the tie with Juventus. Even when he was at uh, Los Angeles, he has always been in communication with Juventus, always have that kind of contract as being an ambassador, even being a player of another team, even being in the management, the marketing side of another team, has always represented Juventus, always in the world. Well, he's studying, he will come back to Juve. It's not today, it's not 
tomorrow of the announcement. It could even be after August, September, October, but in the second part of 2024, Chiellini can come back. There will not be a big, huge announcement, etc., etc. He will not be the right hand of Giuntoli. That's not what uh, is planned, but Giorgio Chiellini could come back with a low-profile role. Starting to understand Juventus, not what is Juventus, because not a lot of people know better than Giorgio Chiellini what is Juventus, but understanding that management side of Juventus, a new management side made of um, Cristiano Giuntoli with probably new managers as well, understanding the backstage side, learning and doing steps. He's a really ambitious man, has always wanted to be in that management. Big opportunity for Giorgio Chiellini to come back with a low-profile manager role and then making step towards his bigger career. The role has to be defined yet, but we can say that Giorgio Chiellini come back to Juventus. We can't wait as well. Corriere dello Sport, of course, we need to speak about what happened yesterday in Europa League. Congratulations to Atalanta. Corriere dello Sport, oh mia dia, oh mia dea, sorry. That uh, can be translated as oh my goddess. Why? Because la dea means goddess. Divina, divine for uh, Gazzetta, divine for Tutto Sport. What a beautiful game of Atalanta yesterday, 3-0. I was a bit uh, surprised and shocked about uh, a lot of people's reaction. Probably they watched uh, Leverkusen for the very first time that started to say, ah, but Leverkusen overrated team. Uh, Leverkusen, we were not expecting that. Probably their unbeaten run has been totally overrated. No, Leverkusen did a miracle in season 23-24, unbeaten for 51 games, winning for the very first time in their history the Bundesliga, arriving in the final of Europa League. They are in the final of uh, the German Cup. Best attack, best defense. They are doing just wonders. It happens that in a final, things are unpredictable. You have an Atalanta that is arriving to the final after losing a few days ago another final they had that sense of revenge they wanted to go for it probably the mistake of Leverkusen is with that title of unbeaten team with the title of and the label of a big favorite one they were maybe thinking that it would have been a bit easier but they didn't count on an old wolf ex-Juve player, ex-Juve Youth Academy coach, Giampiero Gasperini, that uh, prepared it fantastically well. And probably they were not expecting a fantastic Lukman, first African player to score more than a brace in a European final. Crazy. He scored three goals in a final. 3-0 signed Lukman. But I will tell you, there is one player that impressed me more than all the other ones. It was Ederson. Ederson, what a player. Yesterday looked like they were not only the three goals of Lukman, but also three Ederson on the field. What a player. If you could go there with some cash, if there is a player that you want to go for, go for Ederson. What a player. Does that mean that Calcio is back? Does that mean that all the Italian football problems are solved? Absolutely not. And yesterday Calvo spoke about it in the Senate, where you had a few representatives of uh, Italy that were speaking about football and the future of football. And he said that, uh, pay attention, because Italian football has been in a crisis for a long time. In 2010-3, Juventus had a turnover, like all the other big giants of football, around 230-250 million euro. 20 years later, Juventus was able to double that, because we are around uh, the 500 million, 470 million euro of turnaround. But the problem is that our international rivals have quadrupled it. And that's the big thing. The other ones, they went with a crazy acceleration where Juventus not. And what is the main problem said by Calvo? That the Italian regulators, they treat us like a game and not as an industry. And that's the biggest mindset thing. We are a game of football considered like that in Italy, while the other ones, they understood that it is a business. How many times did I tell you? Football is a business. You like it or you don't like it. Football is a business where fairy tales can happen. Like Leverkusen winning the Bundesliga against Bayern Munich. Like Atalanta winning their second trophy in their history. 60 years, more or less 60 years or a bit more than 60 years after their Italia, they won internationally. So fairy tales exist like Leicester, etc, etc. But football is a, a business. What are the big problems? Well, in the light of struggling economy, in Italy, because we have a problem in Italy in terms of economy. Lack of competition in the television market, another one. Infrastructural issues. Elimination of the growth decree. 
decreto crescita sponsorship of betting companies that are not allowed anymore in Italy well all these things have huge big problems and that's why Calvo said I can't see at the moment Italian football reaching again highest levels we have a problem I wanted to finish with that to tell you fairy tales can happen you need to be creative you need to be strong but you don't have opportunities for mistake which Giuntoli will not have choosing the coach Tiago Motta choosing the managers next to uh, Giuntoli choosing the comeback of uh, Giorgio Chiellini choosing the next one that will take care of the youth academy and especially also in the market if you go for a Coop Miners with 60 million euro while maybe you are going next to an Ederson that would be cheaper maybe you are doing a mistake if you go for a um, for a Samarsic, but you don't find someone that is also defensively strong in the midfield, maybe you have a problem. If you go for a Berardi instead of another player, you have a problem. If you don't, if you are not able to go for a left back player or at least a left foot defender like Calafiori, you have a problem. So you need to be really creative, really paying attention. But I feel it. I feel the positivity. I feel the strength. I feel the ambition. I am. I'm curious. I want more. And I believe that Juventus 24-25 can do beautiful things. Where and what can we reach? We will discover it every single day here on the channel because I know that you will be here together with me supporting the channel with a maximum of like, continuing to subscribe. Grazie forza. You bet.